sure you like radios, but one of the things that really annoys me is having to buy batteries, or if not buy batteries, plug them in. Oh, for goodness sake. Now, if you don't want to do that, the solution is to build your own crystal radio. Now, a crystal radio is a really simple radio. It doesn't need batteries or any source of power other than from the radio waves it picks up itself, uh, because really we just need power in a radio to amplify the signal, to clean it up and that kind of thing. Unless, of course, you want FM or um, DAB or something like that. So what we're going to do now is build a really simple crystal radio. Now these are the tools that you need to build your uh, crystal radio. We have got a drill, we've got a, a small pair of pliers, we've got a crosshead screwdriver, a pair of wire cutters, although if you've got side cutting pliers um, that'll do just as well. We've got a bit of sandpaper, we've got some electrical tape or you can use masking tape. We've got a pen, a pencil will do, uh, we've got a pair of scissors. In terms of materials, you need a board to actually build your radio on. Now this is 18 mil ply, but you can use a bit of MDF, just a bit of scrap wood will be do, do just fine, about a centimetre thick, and this is about 20 centimetres by about 15. Again, dimensions don't really matter. We have got some 20 gauge enamelled copper wire. Now I think there's about five or six meters of it here. Um, we've got a crystal earpiece. Now this is important. You must get a crystal earpiece, a high impedance earpiece. If you get a normal kind of um, headphones from your iPhone or something like that, they won't work. They take too much current. So you need one of these. Uh, you can get them from most uh, electronic supply places. Uh, we've got a length of wire. This is just, I think, this is multi-strand machine wire or something like that. It's very, uh, very thin, very cheap. Uh, this is going to be our antenna and our earth wire. We have three 16mm screws, crosshead screws, and we've got three screw cups. And we also have a germanium signal diode. Now, it's important you get a germanium signal diode because these are for dealing with very small strength signals. Uh, a normal diode won't do the job. And here we've got a length of plastic tube. Now, you can use cardboard. It can be thicker and or thinner than this. It can be longer than this if you want. It doesn't really matter too much for the radio that we're going to build. So these are all the bits that you need. Now, our first step is just to drill a few holes. Now, we need to drill four holes in our tube. Like I say, this could be cardboard or I'm using plastic here. So we just want one hole there, one hole there, and a couple of holes at the other end. So you can see what I've done there, two holes at the top, two holes at the bottom. These are uh, going to be places where we put wire because we're going to wrap a coil around this and this will hold the coil in position. Our next holes we want to drill are in the board to hold everything in place. Now, not too important where they are, just put your uh, tube on here and you want to drill a hole at either end of where the tube is, so just over there. These are just pilot holes for the screws. And one there like that. So you don't want to drill them too deep, they're just to get the screws started. Now the third hole is a bit more important where this goes. So you get your silicon, uh, your sorry, your germanium diode. You put this so that the end of one of the uh, wires that come out of it overlaps this hole here and then use your pen or pencil just to mark a dot about a centimetre from the end of the other wire because we're going to use the screws and screw cups to hold this in position so obviously those holes need to be close enough together that they're going to overlap the wire so let's drill our third hole <laughs> There we go, we won't need the drill again. Right, now to wind the coil. Now winding the coil is the most tedious part of building this. It does take a little while and you have to be careful as you do it. The first thing you want to do is pick up your tube 
and take about 20 centimeters or so of the enamel copper wire, poke it through one of the holes at one end of the tube, doesn't matter which, and then up through the other hole, put through like that, and then loop it back and back up through the other hole. So, now the reason we do this, it just holds the wire at one end, so as you uh, wind your coil it doesn't unravel. Now, once you've fixed it, you want to start winding it. Now, winding the coil, like I said, is quite tedious, but the neater you do it, the better your radio is going to work. So you want to make sure that each turn of the coil is as close to the previous turn as possible, but don't overlap them. If you overlap them, your radio will not work as well. So keep the tension up as you wind the coil. If you let go, obviously the whole thing's going to be like a spring and it's going to all ping apart. Once you've done about 10 turns, I haven't done 10, but we'll stop here to show you what to do when you've done 10. Once you've done about 10 turns, get yourself a piece of tape and just wrap it over the coil like that. And that will again just help to keep it in position as you actually um, turn the coil. And then carry on. So you've done probably, I don't know, 15 turns or whatever, it's not too important. Now, then we get to another tricky bit, because what you're now going to do is you're going to use your pen or pencil to wind what we call a tap. Now, a tap is what we're going to use to actually tune our radio. And this, this is where it does help if you're working with a partner. So I'm going to be a bit clumsy as I do <laughs> It'll be very clumsy as I do this, but the idea is you put your pen on there and you wind you wind the turn around the pen or pencil. Now don't do it too tight or you won't get your pen out at the end like that. And then you just carry on neatly winding. Now you might at this point want to stick another piece of tape on to keep it all in the right position. So this is what I've got so far. There we go. You see I've wound a tap around the top there. Now make sure you can still twist the pen because you are going to need to remove that at the end. So you need to make sure it's quite loose. Okay, in the interest of getting this video done in an actual manageable time, here's a coil I made earlier. Now this one is actually made on a cardboard tube, uh, but it's the same principle. We've still got the two holes at either end that we wrap the wire around. And you can see here, these are my taps. Now you keep the pen in all the way along as you do it, and then you pull that out as the last thing. So like I say, it's important that they are relatively loose so you can actually remove the pen. Now I wouldn't use a wooden pencil really because the, the thing is when you wrap those around, it bites into the wood and it can make it very hard to actually remove it. So there you go. You can see I've made a reasonably kind of neat job of that. And what we now need to do is the ends that stick out from the coil, we need to strip the enamel off because the enamel is an insulating layer. So you can use a pair of scissors just to scrape the enamel off. It does take a bit of scraping, so make sure you do it well. You want to be able to see nice bright copper underneath. Scrape it off all the way around and use a bit of sandpaper as well to rub them just to make sure we're going to get a good electrical contact. Now I'm not doing these too much because these have already been done. 
And then once you've done that, again, another slightly tedious job, you need to do the same for all of the taps along here. You need to remove the enamel. Now that's a bit tricky um, because you don't want to remove the enamel from the actual coil, otherwise the turns of the coil will short circuit. So again, you can use your scissors just to scrape the tops, like so, and again I've already done these, so I don't really need to do it again. And then use your sandpaper to rub all the way along the top, like so. Again, we want to see nice bright copper and then very carefully roll a little cone of sandpaper and try to sand the insides as well. If you've got a little multi-tool type thing, it's probably got a little kind of drum uh, sanding disc thingy in it that you can use to do this, which make it a lot easier. So anyway, you go all the way along and you sand all those taps because you need to make good electrical contact with them. Once you've wound your coil and you've sanded off all the bits that need sanding off, now it's time to actually assemble your crystal radio. And the first thing you have to do to do that is you need to think about the earpiece. Now, um, the earpiece, if you want, you can buy a little jack socket for this to go into just means a little bit more kind of wiring or soldering or something like that or if you're not going to use this for anything else just snip this off that leaves you with two bits of wire which are twisted together like that. and you just want to unravel about 10 centimetres or so of the lead, like that. Basically these two pieces of wire need to fit between these two holes on your board. So your diode's going to go there and your earpiece is going to go across here. Now what you need to do is strip the ends of this wire. Now this wire is really thin. You can do this with a pair of scissors, or even uh, if you've got a small enough pair of wire strippers, you can do that. Or you can just use a thumbnail, which is generally enough to do it. So I've got the bare copper exposed there. Oops, pulled the whole wire off there. There we go. Right, just twist the loose ends together just to make it a little bit more manageable. Like that, kind of. And now we're going to position everything on the board where we want it to go. So our coil, the two pieces of wire from our coil need to line up with these holes here. If you want to, you can trim them to size so it's a bit better fit. I'm not going to bother. <coughs> Our diode is going to go between these two holes and our earpiece is going to go between these two holes. Now, we're not going to do any soldering. We're going to do this solderless. And the way we're going to do this is just using the screws and the screw cups to form a junction between the wires because obviously the screws and the screw cups are metal, they're conductors, so they will form a convenient joiner. So you want to do one at a time really. Um, make sure the wires that you're joining are underneath the screw cup, like so. And this can be a bit tricky. Again, if you're working with a partner, it works out a lot better because you've got someone to hold the wires while you tighten the screws up. So we drilled our pilot holes, so our screws should go in without any problem. Right, so I've got the screws in, but I haven't finished yet. Now, this is what I've done so far. You can see I've joined this wire with this screw to one side of our earpiece the earpiece is on the end here, travels around here, and then I've joined one end of the diode through this screw here with the wire from the earpiece, but I haven't yet connected 
these two, the end of the diode and the other end of the coil. The reason is this is where we're going to attach our earth wire. Now the earth wire, as the name suggests, connects our radio to earth so that we can have a current flowing through it basically because that's what we need in order to receive the radio signal. Now our earth wire is just a piece of thin wire so what we do with this is we strip off some of the insulation from one end. If you've got a pair of wire strippers you can do it with that. I just did it with scissors. Again twist the ends like that so it makes it nice and manageable and then we're going to join all three pieces of wire together under that screw the same as the others. Now this can be a little bit tricky and again Working with a partner certainly has advantages when you're doing this. Right, so we've got all three pieces of wire underneath the screw and the screw cup. I could have done with drilling my pilot holes a little bit deeper perhaps. And we join them all together like that. So, now you can see our coil is connected to these two screws. Our earpiece is connected to these two screws and our diode between these two screws. And this is our earth wire. Now our earth wire needs to travel from wherever we're going to set our radio up to, to somewhere where we can connect it to earth. And the best way of doing that is connecting it to a cold water pipe somewhere because these travel down into the ground and they will give us a good electrical earth. Um, so I've got a very long piece of wire here, we won't need all of that. If you can find yourself a radiator pipe or underneath the sink, a cold water pipe, something like that, that will be fine. Um, so imagine I'm only going to have a very short earth wire here. What you do with the other end of it is you can strip off a nice long length of insulation. So I've stripped off about three centimetres or so there. Twist the wire again so all the individual strands join together then you probably want to get your sandpaper and where you're going to connect this to your cold water pipe give it a good rub give the, the, the cold water pipe a good rub so again you're exposing lots of nice bare copper and then wrap this around that nice sanded piece of copper and fix it there with a piece of electrical tape and that should provide you with a good earth Now, all we need before we use our radio is an aerial or an antenna. Now, what the aerial or antenna does is it picks up the radio waves, or basically the radio waves strike the antenna and they cause the electrons in the antenna to move backwards and forwards. So we're basically getting an electrical current produced when the radio wave hits the metal of the antenna. And obviously it has to be metal. So we're going to use the other length of wire I've got here. There's probably about 20 feet about six, seven meters or so of wire. Now, for our radio to work as well as possible, we need to get the aerial up as high as possible and stretched out as far as possible. Now, obviously, when you're doing that, be careful, be safe. Don't go climbing over the roof of your house or anything like that. Somewhere you might fall off. So make sure that you're doing it in a safe way. But get this up as high as possible and stretched out horizontally as far as possible. Once you've done that, strip one end, and this end is what you're going to connect to your radio. Um, now, the taps here we can use for tuning, and what you can do is just form a little U shape in the stripped end of your wire and just hook it through the taps and just fold it like that so it makes a connection. If you want to, you can use jumper leads. Um, these are just little pieces of wire with a crocodile clip at either end. So instead of folding the bare end of the wire around your taps, which can be a little bit fiddly, you simply connect one end of your jumper lead to that end of your aerial and the other end to one of your taps, like that. And then, with your aerial in position, connected to earth, you should be able to, in your earpiece, pick up radio signals. 
Now, you should be able to actually hear radio stations, you should be able to hear music and understand speaking. Now, these will only pick up AM radio, amplitude mod uh, modulated radio signals. Um, you need something a bit more complicated for FM and even more complicated for DAB. Um, and it will be very quiet because there's no amplifier here. So that's, like I said at the beginning, why we use these special earpieces. And your radio should work. A um, couple of things to mention. If you're sharing your radio with other people, you may want to invest in some antiseptic wipes to remove any gunky wax and things like that that may come out of people's ears onto the earpiece. Alternatively, what you can do is you can actually use a telephone receiver, and here's one I've got like this. So just the telephone receiver, and you cut it off the phone, and you'll probably have three or four wires, four wires this one's got, coming out of the end here. To find the correct two to use, strip them all, strip the ends of all of them, and then just get yourself a double A battery, and just connect it in turn between different pairs of wires and listen here. When you hear a crackle, the two wires that are connected to the battery are the ones that you want to connect into your crystal radio circuit. Um, and this is a bit more hygienic than having people sticking that into their ears. And this, this will work just as well. Um, another thing to mention, don't use your radio if there's any chance of an electrical storm. Obviously, you, if you've got a big wire hanging out the top of your house, stretched out horizontally, it could potentially make a good target for a lightning strike. And if your ear is plugged into the other end of it, um, you could uh, find yourself uh, part of the pathway for a lightning bolt to ground, which won't be a pleasant experience. So anyway, this is your very basic crystal radio set and it should work. If it doesn't work, try re-sanding the taps, re-sanding all these connections here to make sure you've got a good electrical connection and check that your connection to earth is a good one as well. But apart from that, you shouldn't have any problems with it. And it should give you years of listening pleasure with no batteries and no fiddly plugging it into the mains.